Okay, continuing on with our outstanding guest speaker series. Today, the TNCC Library Open Genealogy Lab is proud to present Rick Gohl and his associate, Audrey Benez Beltran. Uh, Rick is co-founder of Poster My Wall, which is a one-stop online solution for all your graphic design needs. Uh, it simplifies design and allows you to create stunning graphics and videos without requiring any artistic skills. It will enable you to easily design your own self-published book covers, family tree posters, flyers, and your family reunion notices, genealogy-themed holiday cards, etc. Poster by Wall works on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can even collaborate with other family members to create family treasures that will be passed down from generation to generation. So let's please put our hands together and welcome them, shall we? All right, well, thanks for having us, guys. I know that Rick is trying to hop on in, but the, um, his connection has been a little wonky lately, but I'm here to answer any questions that you may have and to just kind of walk you through basically the 101 of creating a design on our website. So you you guys had, some, some of you guys had issues logging in? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to open up the share screen. Hopefully you guys can see it. Sorry, it takes a bit. Is it up for you guys or not yet? Not yet. Okay, I see that it's still loading on my end as well. If not, I'll switch to a different browser. But can you let me know where exactly in the login process, was it once you just hit login or and you got an error message? I just you want know to make what, sure from what I can tell, they were having with that first URL that you sent me, mm -hmm. uh, where it says show login. It didn't actually take them to the login page. It took it to a Google, uh, uh, like a, a list of, of different um, ways to get into the website, but not the login. Interesting. Okay, let me see if I can get it through a different browser. It is not work. It's still trying to load on my end for some reason. Let me. Are you are you using Internet Explorer? I was and it and all of a sudden it just stopped on me and I yeah I'll tell you to be honest with you it's best to use um, Firefox Chrome? or Chrome yeah okay let me see if I can get back to that screen it won't actually let me get out of there let's see. All right, let me see if I can reshare. Pardon the glitch, guys. It actually just froze everything up. Do I'm going to try to get back into it. Just give me one second, I apologize. If you can't, you can log out and log back in. That way you can, you know, like uh, force quit your, your Chrome. I mean, yeah, uh, that. Okay, let us try going in through Chrome now. Okay. Hopefully that works. Can you guys see it now? Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So I am on the, I used that same um, URL where it was authenticate show login. And I would go here to student login. So I have tmcc library oops pardon me library, open genealogy lab so now it should just it should literally just show the the home page again but you're logged in as a student and you'll know because up there it'll say student on the right side Okay, hold on um, one second, Audrey. Um, what is what are your logins showing? If it's not showing student, what is it showing? Nothing is showing. Oh, yeah. yeah, highlight the torso. Does everyone highlight the torso? Okay, excellent. Okay, so I think we're on track, Audrey. Go ahead. All right, perfect. So now, basically, you are ready to go to create 
whatever design you want. So what we're gonna do here is if you click on create a design and on new design, this is the next page that'll open up. And the way the site is formatted, um, you can either pick a preset template or a template size. And the nice thing about that is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, we actually have templates optimized for ebook covers, which you can turn into a print as well. But just for now, if you scroll all the way down and click on that book cover template, you should be able to see a screen that looks like this now. Everyone see that kind of a screen? Okay, hold on. No problem. Who's not seeing it? Raise your hand. I'm not even here. Okay, all right. Hold on. <laughs> Audrey, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, for people who signed in using their own email account, how do they get to the student account? So uh, what you would do first is log, log completely out of Poster My Wall and go back to that URL, the one where it was um, authenticate show login. And instead of using your own email account, just click on the student login and enter the, um, the class project name, the TMCC library, Open Genealogy Lab, because otherwise it won't save to the classroom folder. Understood. Okay, so if anyone logged in using their own email, or their Facebook account, log completely out, go back to this first login right here, and then click on the, the, the profile, the, the, the highlight of the person, and then you're gonna, that will take you to the student account. Okay, if you don't mind, Audrey, just give them a few moments. No, no, totally fine. Take as much time as you need. Okay, so I think we got almost everybody done, Audrey. Okay. We got a few people that still aren't where they need to be, but but I, yeah, Randall. Yeah. Uh, when I was with that unit, but it's not giving me student login. It's actually showing my name. You know what? I noticed that on somebody else's too. Once they log in, it seems to remember who they were. You know, uh, I know that on certain browsers, if you there are times that you have to clear out the cache or or the cookies. Um, and or go to a different not, browser. Yeah, or go to a different browser and just log in through there since you haven't used that other um, browser yet, or if you haven't used that other browser yet. Okay, I think we've got enough people where you can go ahead and go on, Audrey. Okay, so I will show you a couple of different options. The first one is going to be the most straightforward. If you just wanted to start with a blank canvas, I would do either solid colors or gradient colors because the way this is going to work is you can either upload your own images, pick something from our stock photo library, or just do straight text, just depending on how you want your design to look. So uh, I'll do a couple different things. We can go solid color, and if you click on that, it's going to be your background color. So let's just say for this example, I choose black. It's just easy color to work with, and it'll open up in your editor. <coughs> okay, hold on. Hold on, Audrey. No worries. Audrey, was it create a design? Yeah, so if you go to create a design and pick a uh, new design, scroll all the way down all through all the template options, and the one on the bottom right should say book cover. Okay, we're all, all track. Okay, go ahead. Okay, 
So now you basically have your blank canvas. It's in the book cover size. You have your color. You can name it whatever you want to name it under title and the fun part can begin. It's really, it, you can make this design as detailed or as straightforward and simple as you want. And what I mean by that is you can now add your text and we offer two types of text options. There's plain text and there's fancy text. With plain text, the default is a black color. Um, so I probably should have picked a different background color. I apologize, but you can change that. When you click on your text box, you have the editing options on the right side of the screen. So from here, you can change your text color and you can choose any of the hues or sometimes there's a suggestion for a color. I'm just gonna pick the white one. You close out of it and now you can edit your text. In order to edit plain text, you just double click into your box and you can either highlight the word, use your backspace <laughs> or even use the delete text option that is available again on the right side of the editor. And now you can just say, family history. With your text, you have the option of changing the font style. We unfortunately not, we are working on this, but we don't yet have the option of doing like a bold underline or italicized feature, kind of like how you find it in Word. But we do offer a variety of text and within the text or font styles and then within that font family there are different options too. So hopefully you find something that you like and you know, you can play around and you'll see that you can adjust the size of the box. And this is helpful for, let's say you wanna increase your font size. Let's just say 120. Now you also have the option of changing your alignment from left, center, right, or justified. So here we'll do family history. And you, and you can tell yourself, yeah, that looks good. Let me add a little more text, but I want a different style to it. So you can go back over here and then you can add fancy text. Fancy text, excuse me, will allow you to pick an effect with a specific font and then you can also change your colors. So for this, you will add your text in the box here as opposed to in the editor, there's gonna be a, um, a field where you can add it and you can just add. Now here you can change your hues or you say, I like it, I'll keep it for now. And you can even change how it looks. So you can go straight text, you can curve up and it'll preview it right above. And with curve up and with wave, you can actually change how much it waves, just depending on your preference. Uh, there's roof, which kind of pitches at the top, um, but I'll keep it to that for now. So again, if you decide, okay, I like that, but now I wanna change the color, just click on the text box and you will be able to change your font style and your colors, your shapes, uh, all on the right side of the editor, but make sure you click on the text box first. But unlike plain text, if you want to edit fancy text, excuse me, text, it'll be on the right side of the editor. So for plain, you double click and you change. And for fancy text, you're gonna go over to the right side of the editor and change it here. You want me to pause there for now while you guys kind of play around with it? Is everyone, is everyone playing around with it? Yeah, give them a few moments to go ahead and play with it because I think they're all on that site. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yes, absolutely. Does this run better in the browser? Audrey, the question was, is, does, does this particular um, website uh, work better in one browser over another? We tend to use Firefox or Chrome. It is it is available and can work on sites like uh, Internet Explorer and Safari, but we do find that there are times where it's a little glitchy on those two sites. So if Chrome, uh, if you can, I would recommend Chrome first. Thank you.
Let me walk around the class real quick here, Audrey. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. I did want to mention early, uh, I had briefly touched upon this earlier, but when you are, when you have your design open in the editor and you can do this at any point in time, make sure you save the title or create a title other than new design, because when it is saved into the classroom folder, if you want to go back to it, or Sue, if you want to say, hey, can you edit, um, you know, to any one student, can you edit your design? If everybody names it a new design, <laughs> it might get a little confusing. You will be able to see what the templates are in there, but it would just probably be in your best interest if you saved it either under your name or whatever you want to call the book cover but you can always do that under that section where it says title. I just wanted to uh, touch upon that again. But could you, go ahead, could you go ahead and save that just to show them how to save? Oh yeah, sure. So let's just say I want to title it sample book cover and I'm just going to have to move this. And once you do that, you can just hit save up here, which is in between resize and share. And once you're there, you, you know, you can even download it just so that you have a physical copy or not even a physical copy, download it and save it. Just kind of look at how it is right now, but you can always go back to it because all you have to do is press close and you'll be back in the editor. So once you save it and give it a unique name that you want to name your project, uh, you can always go back into the student folder, find it easily because you, you named it and then uh, edit it some more. Mm hmm that's correct. Excellent, okay. Yeah? Hey, Audrey, thank you. I took a few people that were a little bit behind and I got them all up. Oh no, take your time, uh, no worries about it. So now that you have your text, you can add more to your design. And, by, and when I click on photo, you'll find a couple of different options or a few, I should say. Um, add from my photos, so if you have a photo library saved onto your computer, you can choose images from there. Add stock photo, which we'll touch, we'll, this is what we'll do, and we offer a variety of stock images that are HD quality. If you are connected via Facebook, Google Drive, or Dropbox, you can link, if you have those accounts, you can link up to them and select images from there. So you have options for where you want to upload images. So if you go to stock photo, we offer a few different libraries, which is nice. So let's just say we want to do, um, let's just go with family. So now you can click on any of these images and upload it to your site. And the nice thing is once you put in that uh, search term, you can scroll through the different libraries we have, choose which image you want. So if you'd like, you can play around and just click on a photo and add it to your book cover and it will show up like that. You can Drag out the corners if you want to make it bigger. And let me move this screen. You can even adjust the opacity. Let's say you want to make it a more sheer look behind your text. You can use the opacity toggle over here. Let's do 75%. And you'll see that it dimmed it down just a bit and you can continue to mess with the toggle. Now let's say you want it to appear behind your text and let me know if I should slow down or not. Okay, but... hold on, let me walk around the class real quick. <laughs> um, one of the people who are logged in uh, is when they pick one up from the stock, mm -hmm. it says it's a Getty image and it wants a charge. So with that is the one library, um, stock library that we have that if you, do add Getty to your design. If you don't pay for the the overall download, it will have the Getty watermark on it. 
So thank you for bringing that up. I forgot to mention that, but I would recommend using any of the stock libraries that say free. That way there's no watermark on it and you can, um, you don't have to worry about paying for the final image. Could you go back to the, um, to the photos and show them how to find that? So yes, so when you go to stock photo, It should actually show story. Do you see the three uh, libraries, Storyblocks, Pixabay, and Flickr? Or are more options appearing? Everyone seeing that at the bottom? There's no, there's no pictures? Okay, hold on one second. I don't know what these somebody else I Oh, you're just looking for it. Maybe you can find a little smaller. Now you're going to add that photo. Oh. Instead of asking me, I'm going to send it. Good. We got a few people, Audrey, that are a little bit behind. Could you go back one step yeah. to show them how to get the photos showing? From the yeah. book cover? So, if you, uh, so are you already in the editor? Yeah, they're in the editor with the book okay. cover. Okay. So, at the, on the left side of the editor, you should see an icon that reads photo. And if you click on that, the second option should read add stock photo. So, when you select that option, so let me just, let's say that's blank. So, you can type in the word, let's see, let me just. So when you type in the word family, oops, it comes up with all the search results within that library, and we offer three different ones, the Storyblocks, Pixabay, and Flickr. Those are free images. And you can click through all three libraries and see which image you like best. Go ahead. Okay, so now that you have your image on your on your canvas, you have the option of adding effects to it, and you can find that again once you click on the image. All the editing options will be on the right side of the screen. So one nice one would be like torn paper, so it gives it just kind of a more yes vintage type look, but you can go through and just see which one best fits your design. And you can continue to add effects to the image. So for example, let's say you like the image, but you don't really like the color, you can add a filter to it where you can make it black and white. Sepia, or you can even invert the colors, but kind of looks like a negative image. So let's say you like black and white, and you can do that. In then you uh, if you'd like to rearrange where the image is, um, you can actually just click on it and drag your mouse wherever you want to put the picture.
The same can be said for the text as well. If you decide that you want the picture in the middle, but your text was there, you can move it. Just click on it and drag it around. Or you want the image to appear behind the text. So to do that, you can move your image to wherever you want it. We have a feature where you can either send to back or bring, the, bring to front. And you can do this both with images and with text. But let's say you have your image and you want it over that initial title. Just click on send to back until the text comes up. And now you see that the text is above or layered over the image. But because the image is now in black and white, you can change the color of your text by going by clicking on that text box and using the editing tools on the right. And you can select whatever color you want. Okay, I think everyone's following. Okay, so now you're able to just Basically what happens at this point is you can add more art, you can add more text. Um, what I did wanna show you was if you wanted to, let's say you decided, you know what, I don't want to use the image as just a photo. Everything can be deleted essentially. The other option you have of uploading a background as opposed to just the blank solid color or gradient color that you choose. When you're in the editor, again, don't click on anything and on the left side you choose background. You have the option of, again, selecting a stock photo and your three libraries will show up, story, story, excuse me, Storyblocks, Pixabay, and Poster My Wall. Poster My Wall, you'll see different categories. So let's say you want family collage. Um, this is just some some of the designs that have been pre-uploaded. So I chose a wood, wood background, and now it will give you the option of, since you have the book cover in a certain orientation, it will crop to, the, it will allow you to choose, you know, which section of the template you wanna use. Usually defaults to the middle. You can change it if you'd like. And now instead of that black background, you're gonna see that it's that wood panel background. But let's say you don't really want a wood panel look and you decide you don't really like the templates, or not you don't like, but you would rather use a different looking template. You can try Pixabay, you can try story blocks. Just pick maybe like a silhouette of some sort. Again, the image will pop up and you can decide which portion of the image you'd like to keep in the design. And it changes the look, which you know you can you can then um, without clicking on anything. If you want to change the background look, you can do a filter. I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, so it'll change the entire background to black and white or sepia, messing with the effects. And then from there, if you decide that you know the text isn't popping out enough, you again can change the color. You can change. Let's see style and as you go I recommend that you save your work in the event that the computer freezes you know you if you save your work at least you'll have the most recent changes instead of having to start from scratch or start you know from step two when you're already on step five so now if you forget to click on save 
and you exit, then it's going to save the one that was prior to that change, correct? That is correct. Since there is no auto save feature, whatever the last save you made is what's going to be in the system. But um, uh, again, that's why we recommend clicking on that save option. I also recommend save number one, save number two, so you can go back and get it. Oh, darn. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Could you go over that again, Audrey, about how you can save, you know, like a draft one, draft two, draft three? Oh, so actually, so the way our save option works, um, you know how in Word you have your save and your save as option. Save as would create a new document for you. With our save feature, if you select save, that is going to be, that that's the version that's saved. It saves over your edits. Um, but if you'd like, let's say this is draft one. So let's just say, so you know for yourself that this is sample book cover draft one. Then you save that. You can always create a duplicate design. And I'm sorry, I should have said, if you click on file, the second option will be duplicate design. And now, you'll see that under title, it's called copy of sample book cover. And save that and then make your new changes because it does, it'll, every save you make will override the current design. So if you want multiple drafts, I would duplicate the design and then um, go forward from there. Good advice. That was a good question. Thank you for asking that. Any questions before she goes on? No? Okay, Audrey, go ahead. Okay. So let's say you... Um, you like the way the book cover looks, you're okay with it, but you also want to use it as mm, just another size design. So we have the option to resize and you can use it for, you know, US letter, banner sizes, <coughs> videos, I'm not really gonna touch upon that. Or you want to, if you are on social media and you'd like to promote your book cover, you can make it Instagram post size. So again, with the design open in the editor, select resize. You can scroll down, click on Instagram post, and now it resizes the layout. So as before, where you had that book cover and it was a rectangular layout, you'll see that the Instagram post is a square layout and if you'll notice it adjusts the layout but it doesn't adjust <coughs> the content so i always point that out um, because sometimes it, it can be confusing you know you adjust your layout it doesn't auto adjust your content so that needs to be manually adjusted so if you wanted to make the picture bigger or smaller then you know, you go ahead, click on the image, you drag the corners in and out. You can again move where you want your text to be. But I do want you to note that because the layout was a different size, the background image may get cropped in a certain way. Now, could you just back up one step and show us how to get back into that from the, the prior place where we were before you went yeah. to Instagram? So just to, um, just to point out, if you are not ready to save yet and you want to go back to the previous version, if you click on the left arrow, it will t it'll take you back to as far as you want to go. So in this case, I went all the way back until it said undoing the resize. So here we're in the book cover option again. 
So what I'd like to do is I want to use it now for an Instagram post size. So I'm going to select resize. And you can either type in Instagram and it'll show you the different sizes we have. Or you can scroll down to the social media category and click on Instagram that way. And resize. So if I wanted to save this as a draft, I might call it, you know, family history of Instagram draft one. Correct. That way you can differentiate between the book cover size or the, I'm sorry, the ebook cover size or the social media cover size. Now let's say, <laughs> let's say they wanted to use this as a, uh, a photo at the top of their Facebook page. Could you do that? So we do offer a few different Facebook options and I'm just going to type it in to get us there quicker. So because it's an image, we, you can, um, let's see, if you are just going to post it onto your timeline or you're just going to post it as a profile picture, I would recommend the Facebook shared image. But if you wanted to make it across the top of the page, I think, Sue, that's what you meant. Um, right. I would now choose the Facebook cover photo. So if you choose that, it's going to resize it. Oh, but I that see. is... Yeah, but remember how I said when you resize, it will crop your design in a certain way. Mm -hmm. What you can do is you go back to your background option on the left side of the editor, select stock photo, and if you, you remember which image it was, you can reselect it and choose from where you'd like the crop to occur. So let's see. So now instead of just kind of the horizon and the water, it should capture all of that. So if you wanted to create a, a Facebook page for your self-published book, uh, you could do that very easily. Yeah, it's nice that you have the option. And we do, we do try to, I know Facebook changes their uh, sizing requirements all the time, so we try to stay up to date with it. And the current Facebook um, layouts are with the current Facebook requirements. Sorry, let me just check this. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. All right. Uh, what about? Able to save this. Did you hear the question? It was, can you save it as a PDF? The, I'd have to double check with our design team. I know that when you save your design and you try to download it, it's automatically as a JPEG. And usually within the classroom, uh, the designs are JPEG for, format. So let me just double check with my design team if I could send them a quick message. <laughs> Can you hear me, Audrey? Rick, you're there? Yep, I'm here. Ah, so um, in in the um, the download options page, after a, a, down, a purchase download, there is an option for PDF. But not, so in, if you, if you, but not in the student, as a student, you couldn't do that then without having to pay? Because, you know, I, I kind of wanted to keep the, the class into the free I'll, area. I'll just let me hit the download button and show what the options are for. Yep. So go ahead and take the free one. Okay, and I will be able to open that for you guys. So, yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to pay to get the PDF option. Could you convert, could you convert, like I know for instance on my Mac computer, you can convert uh, a JPEG to a GIF or whatever you want. Is that possible? Yes. So you could download it for free 
and then just use your your app or you know whatever you have it like i'm sure if you have a pc they have a similar program it's just yeah, that i have a can, mac or you can even use uh we've done it where we've used free websites and you can convert you know your jpeg to the pdf file oh perfect yeah i've seen those yeah. files i mean i've seen those websites yeah and then i've done that for a couple of images for personal use and they turn out pretty nicely but this is a sample of the when I chose the basic free in Facebook. Audrey, it looks like your screen's gone gray again. Uh-oh. Yeah. Let me try to close Let this. To stop sharing and share again. I will be right back. Uh, the, the question was, is what is the DPI of your download? The JPEG? Uh, it depends on the, um, the, for the paid options, you can get pretty much any size that you want. Um, the free one is limited to a, um, a fairly small size that I don't remember offhand exactly what it is. Can you guys see the screen again? Uh, you were, I saw your screen for a moment and then it went gray again. Let's see if it'll work. I'm currently in the editor, is it showing up? No, just the gray screen. Okay, I'm gonna try stop sharing again. Okay, now we see it. Okay, perfect. Okay, any other questions before she goes on? Okay, Audrey, go ahead. I mean, at this point, you can try resizing, you can move the text around the images. If you guys have questions, we're happy to field it, but essentially you, we recommend that you kind of play around with your design so that you can see exactly what else you would want to add. Or if you, you know, a question that you didn't think of right away. So if they wanted to do, let's say they're having a family reunion and they want to, mm -hmm. you know, do a flyer for the family reunion. Using turn the this same into or a flyer, just... you know, and add additional, uh, you know, text, like, you know, location, time, date. Yep. So you uh, would you let's say, do you want me to start a brand new one or just use the existing format we have right, or image we have right now? I think doing a, a new one might be good because it's reviewing what you've already done in a new format. Yeah, happy to do that. So I'm just gonna say that. And Sue, at any time, you know, you can go through the classroom. I, this, this will be saved in that classroom folder. So you, can, you have the option of going back to it or you can just delete it if you want. But now let's say, okay, I am ready to do a flyer. So you can actually go back to Poster My Wall. Uh, click on that poster on my wall and go back to create a design. Put a new design. And we're back to that page where we had the different categories of our template sizes. And let's just say you wanted to do a you know family flyer. Go with US letter size. You can choose your orientation. And now you create it. So before the, with the first one, I did the solid color for this one. Let's just, if you know, you can use an image if you have one that you'd like. I don't have one handy, but we can go for search for stock photos. And since it's a reunion, let's just, let's do picnic. And now you can pick whichever image speaks to you. 
I'll just choose this guy. And again, because you have a particular format, you can choose which section of the design you'd like to keep. Apply it. And you now have your background where you can, oh, where you can add all your information now. So let's just do a combination of, you know, plain and fancy text. And so when, again, when you click on that plain text option, the default is going to say add your text. So go ahead and double click into it. You can highlight it and say family reunion. And let me change that text for you again using our editing tools on the right side. Let's just choose this guy. And I will change the color. And there are certain things you can do to make the text stand out a little. You can actually add a background to your plain text. So let's say you wanted to just, you know, stand out just a bit more. You can also play with the opacity of your background again. Let's change that. So you've now added a background to your text so that the plain text stands out slightly. And you can also add what we like to call a shadow. Let's do strong. And now the, sh the shadow is actually what's going to make the text stand out versus that background. And you can do more than one line within the text field. So you can add Pardon me. Where, when, time. And you can change the text again. And let's say you wanted to add text next to it, not within the same box. You can use, I don't know if you've noticed, but there are blue lines that show up. We don't have a grid, but these blue lines will show you where your text aligns with another text box. So let's see, I've been part regular. You can also See which text you've used recently if you don't want to constantly scroll up and down. So park tomorrow 12 p.m. Now you can click on your text box and use those blue lines to kind of align where you want the text to appear next to other text boxes. Any questions on that? Any questions? No, not, not at this point. Okay. You know, and then if you wanted to add an additional image to your already, um, if you want to add an additional image, you can go back to that photo icon and again, select from whichever library you prefer, whether it's your library, your Facebook page, or a stock image in one of our libraries. So if you have like, um, like most of my students have like hundreds of pictures of like their family from like historical pictures, uh, they can just simply open up the file on their computer and then just download it right into this program. Yeah, so what would happen is, you know, you would click add from my photos, and I don't have any <laughs> saved here, but you would click on upload photos and you can select multiple at once for it to upload. And then click on each image where you want it to be to 
fit in within your layout. Nice. And now, like what is, the, that, what is that media? What is that media link right there? I see on the left hand side. So this actually is geared towards videos. If, if that was something you guys were interested in, I wasn't sure since you were only uh, mainly talking about the book covers. Yeah, let's touch on that since it's there and, and they're all looking at it. Okay, so if you were to add a video option, <laughs> I don't have any videos saved, but um, I'm going to save this. Let me just save this as flyer sample. If you go back to, you know, if you want to create another design, you actually can create a video. So instead of doing an image download, there is a video download option. So you would click on new video. And um, this, this actually works out really well. Let's say you wanted to promote your family reunion again on social media. I would pick that. I picked Instagram post and I will choose a stock image. Let's just say picnic again. Actually, hold on. Uploaded the background. Rick, real quick question. You can hear me. Sorry. Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. In student accounts, do they have the option of the video download designs? Mm. No. Okay. So you're not going to be able to get at that video stock. Got it. Okay. I was wondering why that wasn't available. But for those of you who created your own account, because uh, I know some of you had your own personal logins, if you were not in the classroom account, you do have the option of creating that design, um, which I can also, Sue, I can email you with instructions on that if they wanted to try it on their own. Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay. And then in the meantime, do you have a sample that you can show them? Let me see if I can pull it up. I, it will keep me logged in. I'm going to have to log out out of uh, the classroom account. But let's see. So I, I can actually walk you through it. So if you wanted to create a video, I would do create a design and click on new video. And you have the option of selecting a video template, an image template. Um, and let's just go, go with events. And I'm just going to pick Valentine's Day. And when you click on it, it'll open up. And this is what it will look like in the editor. So it's a nice little, little video file. And this one is actually in US letter size. So again, I, you can always resize it, you know, if you wanted to put it on your social media. And I'm choosing Instagram post again. So I use that resize option. Now I'm going to say resize. And the background is, or the layout is now uh, Instagram post versus US letter size. So then you can just customize it with, you know, your particular, uh, you know, like if it's a Valentine's Day family get together, you know, mm -hmm. you can put the who, what, where, when, why, and then post that on your social media. And then uh, you'd actually have moving video uh, invitation, basically. Yeah, so edit, the, the tools would work the same way. You can upload your own images. You can upload images from our stock library. You can add the text. Um, so it's the same. The editing 
options are the same as if you were doing an image download, but now you have basically that moving video file in your design. And with with the video file, you have the it, it the default file itself is an MP4 file, and I believe if it is under a minute, you also have the option of a a GIF. But again, you had ha would have to be logged into your own account. It's videos are not available under the classroom account. Okay, now we did have a question regarding video. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, I'm say, sorry. let's say you've, you've uh, videotaped a relative of yours, like let's say you've done a, an interview with them, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, could you import that? Yes. So let's say you like the, the, the images and the text within the template, but you decide that you want to use your own video. You can only have one video uploaded in the design right now, but what you can do is, so I would just press stop, you can click anywhere on the design that will allow you access to the video. This one, the, the preset template had it locked in place. You can always unlock it if you wanted to move it around. But <laughs> click on the video and then I will delete it. And now you can add from my video. So if you had something saved in your computer, your um, yeah, your, your own personal computer, you can select that video, click on upload, and it will, here, let me just, this was a, a sample one. And if your video has audio, you can actually mute or unmute it. Is there a time limit on how long your video can be? The max is 10 minutes. Okay. Can you edit the video in this program? You can use the trim feature, which will then allow you to, you know, you could do your start time at 10 seconds and end it at 25, and it'll crop to that. Wow. Okay, you got a lot of wows here. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, you could put this in the Facebook too, right? You can. So instead of using the, so actually, if you had um, a video in Instagram format, the Instagram post size or square size, which is the same, you can upload that to your timeline. But if you were to upload a cover video, which I believe Facebook cover videos are, are available for groups only, um, it would ha have to be 20 seconds in length. But again, if you're just posting to your timeline because it's your family, it's your Facebook page and you just want your family to see it, what you can do is, again, when you click on resize, you can do, actually, no, I would do square because that is what's going to fit on your, fit well on your, Facebook page. So again, you know, you can, if you had a video that was, you know, relevant, <laughs> I'm just stretching out the video so you can see how it fits the page. Um, you can definitely save all of this, you know, download. I will say this, the, the video download, if you're in your own account, you can have it you can have a basic free version, but it will capture 21 seconds max. So if you had a 10 minute video, if you were only downloading the basic free version, it will only show the first 21 seconds of your video. At no charge. Yeah, at no charge. The high res for purchase, that will capture the entire length of the video for however long you want it to be. Up to now, 10 do, you, do you have like a, a YouTube channel that shows people, you know, even though, you know, we got this recorded, so that's really great. But if they have questions afterwards, uh, can you tell us about uh, like where they go to, to have questions answered? Uh, the best place actually to reach us would be 
our support and you can just email help at 250 mills. So that's 250mils.com. So you do you have a YouTube channel that, you know, that shows all the features? We do have a YouTube channel. There are more like one minute clips. Let's see, actually, let me pull up. Sorry, it's logged into my, <laughs> my kids have a YouTube. So it's just youtube.com slash poster my wall. It should show up. Yep. So we have different clips of how you can add audio or you can add, you, you can resize how to add photos. And what is the general turnaround if somebody uh, emails customer service? Is it 24 hours, 48 hours? What is it? We try, we basically try to answer emails as they come in. We are located in Northern California. So um, we try, we try to be on as much as possible, but we do, we do, if you don't, you know, if you send out an email at two in the morning, you might not get a response till maybe <laughs> seven <laughs> but we do try to answer tickets within if if it does you know come in the middle of the night as soon as we're open now since there's like almost 25 people in class today mm -hmm. um if they all save you know their projects into the tmcc open lab uh folder um, mm -hmm. and they give it a unique name it'll be easy to find but is there a way they can make subfolders in my folder I'm not sure if the students can make it or if you have to make it, to be honest. Okay. So I can make it and then they would they can download or save it directly into their folder under the TMCC folder. Yes. Great. Because otherwise I, I'm thinking if you know if every one of these people in class today does, you know, three drafts, then you know the, the list is gonna be huge. So I, I was trying to figure out a way to make it, you know, more organized for the class. And I can, I, and after all of this, I will follow up in an email, Sue, so that you have that information and, you know, you can share it with the class or you can, if you needed to double check on something, that way you have it in writing as well. Great. That would be wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Speak uh, loudly. Is there a, uh, or how much is, if you want to go professional for the, to, uh, uh, is it a subscription or is it a one-time fee? We actually, we, we offer both. So if you had, you know, if you were to open up your personal account, we have a pay-as-you-go option where uh, downloads start at $2.99. And if you were to go with the subscription, we do have a, we offer two types of plans. One is premium, one is premium plus, and we do it in quarterly or yearly options. And let me see if I can actually pull it up for you. So, we have our quarterly options and we have our yearly options. Premium is, works best if you are doing mainly image downloads. You do have access to video downloads but we have a credit system, which I can actually send that information to you too, Sue, just so you okay. can share it with the class. Um, Premium Plus, it works great if you do a combo of image and video downloads, especially if you rely heavily on video downloads. Great question, thank you. Have another question? No? Okay, all right, I think we're ending right on time because one o'clock right. was our target time. Perfect. So I'm, I'm going to say, uh, if there's no other last, it's your last chance to ask questions. Anybody? Okay. All right, let's give her a big hand, shall we? Thanks for having us, guys. Thank you so much, Audrey. We really appreciate everything, and, and I'm hoping uh, to, to make those sub-files ASAP uh, so the class can get started. Okay, and I will double-check for you and shoot you an email as soon as possible.
Thank you so much for both Rick and Audrey. We really appreciate your expertise. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.